You walk left side, safe. You walk right side, safe. You walk in the middle, sooner or later, <laughs> squished like grape. Here's your look at the NECA toys. This is the Karate Kid Retro Cloth, Mr. Miyagi. When Quiet Maintenance Man, Mr. Miyagi rescues a local kid from a gang of bullies, the boy begs to be trained in karate so that he can stand up for himself. The former serviceman teaches him that the real strength of karate is not in the fists, but in the confidence and balance it brings. Mr. Miyagi comes included with a pair of chopsticks and his bonsai tree. Before we get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Mr. Miyagi is. It's safe to say, I'm sure from looking at it and knowing in the film, Mr. Miyagi is going to be a little bit smaller than Daniel LaRusso. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to do some size comparisons. But in the meantime, let me just provide this surface to you. According to my tape measure, you're looking at the figure standing 6.6 .6 inches in height. And that in centimeters works out to be 16.8 centimeters tall. How about some scale comparisons? We'll bring in Daniel LaRusso. I know what you're thinking. We're, we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, let's also bring in the champion, championship, Daniel LaRusso. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. We'll just put him right there. And uh, who else can we bring in? Who else could be bringing in our comparisons here? Let's bring in Johnny Lawrence. There we go. And why not? We've already looked at him as well. I didn't bring him in the last review. There is John Kreese, kind of surrounded Mr. Miyagi is almost even making him feel smaller than he already is. Now, the thing about it, though, is if you look at all the figures, and I'll do some more comparisons with Daniel in a second, Mr. Miyagi, I think, is too small. Uh, proportionately, he seems also like his proportions are a little bit off, but I feel like Mr. Miyagi should be going to at least the shoulders of Daniel. He's not as short as he's perceived here, or should be as represented here in the retro cloth figure release. Mr. Miyagi whoop, should be, I would say, to about there from scenes going back and watching it again. I really wanted to kind of make sure that the the sizing was correct. And I feel like it's not. I feel like Mr. Miyagi is a little too short when you compare him with the rest of the retro cloth figures that we've already had a look at. We'll talk about size comparisons in a second. Well, I will compare it to Daniel in a second. Let's have a look at the accessories, though, that come included with the figure. Uh, he does come with pretty much the exact same accessories that came with Daniel, minus the fact that Daniel also came included with those sanding blocks. Remember those? Yeah? Yeah, I remember those. He does, however, come with a pair of chopsticks, and a really clever thing that NECA Toys did do. This is Mr. Miyagi's chopsticks. I'm just reaching off, They're a little harder to grab here. Here's Daniel's chopsticks. First glance, they do kind of look the same, but then you realize Daniel, like in the film, actually catches the fly. Mr. Miyagi has never been able to catch the fly. Daniel managed to pull off such the feats. So I know in the other review I mentioned it could have been rice, and then realizing, settling later, I realized it was a fly. A nice, small little detail, something referencing to the film itself. Even though they are the same chopsticks, Daniel actually affords himself the much-caught, successfully bragging the fact that he did catch the fly. Poor Mr. Miyagi's chopsticks got squat. But I like the fact that they did include that little small detail. That tells you that NECA Toys is thinking. And uh, the fact that they also include that little fly, love that. But they are the exact same chopsticks. Now, speaking of also the same, Mr. Miyagi comes with the bonsai tree. The one thing I kind of hoped would have been different between the two figures. However, if you do put it next to Daniel's bonsai tree, they do seem, in fact, to be carbon copies to one another. Now, I don't know if you could just simply say that this is the bonsai tree that Daniel was looking at, uh, in Miyagi's little small shop. But uh, I would imagine, though, like, the intent was that this was probably going to be Daniel's worked on bonsai tree after the fact. And this was Mr. Miyagi's original bonsai tree. But it's just, it's a bit of a shame that they end up being exact carbon copies to one another. I guess you could say that the lighting on the green is a little lighter on Daniel's, but yeah, there's not a whole lot different between them. They are exactly the same to one another. So that's a little bit disappointing. 
Uh, one thing I did want to talk about though was the scale comparison. So once again for that I probably would make a little bit more sense to bring in Daniel LaRusso. This happens to be Daniel from the first wave the standalone wave not counting the championship two pack but i guess again if you wanted to bring that one in why not mr miyagi, mr. miyagi really doesn't change too often in the film so uh we can just bring him in he could either be championship mr miyagi or he could be just do yard work around my backyard mr miyagi either way though i have to admit and painfully have to admit that mr miyagi i feel is underscaled he's too small he really should be and I think I'll just move this one out of the way for the time being, just to show you guys. If you put the figures side by side, foot to foot, line them up so that they are completely leveled to one another, Mr. Miyagi is way too small. I feel like if you just brought him up, no, that's not magic, I'm doing that. I'm just bringing him up a slight bit. What, by, what is that? Like an inch, two inches, inch and a half? If you brought him up to about there, I think that would be a film accurate size comparison between the two figures. Mr. Miyagi really is just, he is not quite obviously as tall as Daniel, but most definitely he's not as small as this particular figure represents him to be. I would say hes he should be at around there, just a little past his shoulder. Resulting though, unfortunately, when you do get the figure, he is a lot smaller than that. And I was trying to think of why he was small. I don't know if it was simply just the case that they're reusing like say, a Kevin body mold or the young uh, Jason Voorhees mold from the other retro cl cloth figure lines. It's just something about it. He just ended up being shorter than what he needed to be. I mean, if you look at the body proportions, if I can slide up his legs, for example, the, everything on him outfit wise is smaller. Um, his legs, I guess, could technically be young Jason or Kevin, but like his thighs are, are significantly thick. So are his arms. And his chest also feels like it's a broader chest. In fact, actually, the chest itself, which I have not done up to this point, I'm wondering if it is actually an adult chest that they ended up putting on a smaller kid's legs. And maybe that's what's throwing off his proportions. Because his arms do also feel like they're a little bit too big for his body. His head doesn't seem so much the, the issue, but it does feel like his torso seems way too big for the figure as well. One thing I did have to admit that NECA Toys did knock out of the park though was the likeness. That definitely looks like Pat Morita or Mr. Miyagi from the movie series. All the way up to the return of the Karate Kid or the next Karate Kid starring Hilary, Hilary Swank. What a terrible, abysmal film. But even like the first three Karate Kids I love and adore to this day. And I gotta admit that is a perfect likeness to Mr. Miyagi. I might even say that's just the best likeness all around of all the retro cloth figures that we've gotten from the Karate Kid all the way up to John Kreese. And I thought John Kreese had a good head sculpt as well. Mr. Miyagi is by far the best head sculpt that we've gotten up to this point. It's just really a shame though that the head is on a body that just doesn't feel accurate. His hands are also quite large and as well as his forearms. And again, I think a lot of it is just chalked up to the fact that the torso and the arms are probably regular adult size, and then the legs are just way too small. You can see that he is sporting his sneakers. There's the undersoles of them. They're sort of curved in a way that kind of causes the figure to have some balancing issues when you want to stand him on a surface. He does have his kind of, I don't know if it's a, it's a shirt and pants, but it kind of looks like it's a onesie, really, when you're looking at it in the retro cloth figure. I also had to adjust his belt. I had to bring this up a little bit when I got it out of the packaging because like the belt was really really low down on him which I guess maybe threw off his proportions as well. He's got the pocket stitched in there and some buttons also represented and you can see that he even has this little key lanyard there located on the front of his belt. Uh, everything about it does feel accurate. Like I said it's really just the scale and the size that's throwing it off. They even got the bold spot there represented on the top and very nicely done in like these etched black panel lines really to simulate the depleting hairline unfortunately on Pat Morita. Uh, again I'm really happy with how the face turned out just really saddened by the fact that he is so short when you stack him up with the other figures from this retro Karate Kid line. Let's have a look at his articulation actually just before that I want to talk just quickly about his hands. His hands, like I said, do seem like they're a little on the large side. One hand is for holding the chopsticks. So like with Daniel, he can just feed the 
kind of the tipped end of the chopsticks right through between his thumb and his pointer finger. There we go. Whoop. Sometimes I do drop that in the process of doing so. Let's, where's Daniel's chopsticks? I may actually, hold on one second. Let me just grab those chopsticks before I lose them. Yeah, so you certainly would not want to lose the chopsticks, especially if you want to display both Daniel and Mr. Miyagi in the feat of capturing the flies with the chopsticks. The thing about it, though, is if you take the chopstick out, his hand does kind of look like it wants to be holding something. Same could be said for this hand here, which is in a permanent gripping pose. Um, I guess if you have the arms down, and just correct this, this Velcro here, I want to just fix because it's driving me bananas. There we go. There we go. If you hand, have the hands straight down, or the arms, I should say, straight down, it doesn't look as awkward. Granted, again, if you bring the hands up, it does look like Mr. Miyagi should be holding something, so all the more reasoning why you would not want to lose these little tiny chopsticks. Hold on to these, whatever you do. As for the other hand, like I said, the other hand is in a gripping pose. I think I'm probably just going to end up displaying it, prying the fingers away from the palm. And you can fit it around the bonsai. Not the easiest, mind you. And it does kind of involve, like I said, prying the fingers away, fitting it around the trunk, if you will. I don't know if you would consider that a trunk with it being such a small tree, but you can fit that around the hand so it does look like Mr. Miyagi is about to prune the bonsai. Uh, maybe they could have also given him like those little uh, clippers, maybe for the fact that he does actually have the bonsai as a possible additional accessory that the figure could come included with. Either way, when you are displaying the figure, I find like bringing the arms out can be a little bit difficult because this gets so tight around the sleeve section of his jacket or of his shirt here. The other thing as well, I didn't notice when I got this out of the packaging that I had to find where the joint was located. I think when you do get it out, the arm is like this and definitely that is not the bend point for it. So just rotate that around even if you can find a way to bring the sleeve up, which is very difficult just because of how close everything is. Uh, but the hinge is right there. You're just not gonna get a whole lot of articulation from the figure because there, there's like, the, the shirt is so tight around him. Anyways, we'll take the bonsai out of his hand for the time being. Let's have a look at Mr. Miyagi's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. Quite rather generous when you look at it, how much they've been able to put. When it comes to these bowl joints, because there's two ball joints basically at play. One is in the base of the neck, one is in the socketed section right underneath his head. Uh, it does give you a much more articulation than what you normally would get if it was just a standard ball joint. The shoulders hinge out, and at least they can hinge out. That's not terrible. The thing about it though is bringing the arms up, I really struggle, and I think a lot of it immediately gets very tight right here. Miss Miyagi has very muscular arms also, I might add. Bending the elbow can be a little problematic. Uh, both the elbows only bend to really about there before you start noticing everything gets like really tight quarters around the forearm section. The hands rotate all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth. Uh, the waist swivels. The legs split out. They can go forward, they can go back. He has a swivel at the very, very top cut of the thigh. Bend at the knee, just a single bend. And then he does have the trademark articulation in the feet. In other words, there's only a pin working the feet to move back and forth. You can't rock them. You can't rotate them. That's really all you can do with them. And there's a close-up look at Mr. Miyagi's shoes. Maybe just in case you don't see enough of them in the film, there's a close-up look at Mr. Miyagi's shoes. Can Mr. Miyagi pull off, say, for example, the crane? Not so much. Uh, because unfortunately his legs, his legs aren't so much the issue. It's more his arms than anything else. Uh, at the end of the day, it just kind of makes it look like he's running than anything else. And because he doesn't have peg holes in the undersides of his feet, he doesn't really have the means to balance anyways. So unfortunately, Mr. Miyagi is sort of relegated more so just to standing, which we can stand him up right there. There we go. And let's bring in, whoops, let's bring in Mr. Miyagi's student, Daniel. Get him to stand up again. He's a little, like I said, difficult at times to stand. Uh, balancing really is an issue with this particular figure. I, love, I really like the figure. My 
biggest nitpick, unfortunately, is the fact that Mr. Miyagi is so small. He should have been a lot taller. He certainly should have stood a lot easier. But standing is not so much the issue as I can always fix that. What I can't fix, though, is the fact that Mr. Miyagi is too small compared to next, next to his student, Daniel LaRusso. For NECA Toys to release a line of Retro Cloth Karate Kid figures, then obviously Mr. Miyagi has to be part of the equation. It's a no-brainer. After all, who's going to train Daniel LaRusso the ways of karate, not to mention sand the floor, paint the fence, wax the car, and every other mundane job that Mr. Miyagi has him doing in his backyard, all the while training him secretly in the ways of karate? I would be probably questioning it myself as well. I'm glad the fact that Mr. Miyagi did make up the first wave and we didn't have to wait for like a wave two or wave three before we finally got Mr. Miyagi himself. Although I am a bit sad in the fact that predating this was the karate championship that had the Johnny Lawrence and the Daniel LaRusso. I really would have loved for the first entry into this line that it be a two-pack of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel LaRusso. I don't really know what else you could do with Mr. Miyagi specifically because he really kind of looks like this through most of the film. Daniel LaRusso, of course, has many different costume changes. The one I keep thinking about right now is I'd love to get Daniel LaRusso in that plaid shirt. I know I mentioned it before when we had a look at Daniel, but I mean, that would be a great set to package that along with Mr. Miyagi. I really don't know what else, again, you would do differently to Miyagi himself, but maybe you could just keep the same outfit and throw in a couple of extra accessories. Mr. Miyagi turned out to be the better of the lot, head sculpt at least. His head sculpt is by far the best head sculpt that we've gotten for the Karate Kid figures. Unfortunately, though, un and unfortunately still, the one biggest problem with the figure is it's so short. It just doesn't feel like it's the proper scale to Daniel. In the film, I think Mr. Miyagi is just past his shoulders or just around Daniel's shoulder section. This figure, unfortunately, portrays Mr. Miyagi a lot shorter than that. That's a bit of a shame that that ended up being the case. Proportionally, he does seem like something's off on him. His torso, or I don't know if it's his arms being so big. Again, I love the head sculpt, but again, there's just not something jiving about this particular figure. Maybe it all boils down to the fact that they did use an adult torso and kid's legs. I don't know. Either way, though, I do like how this one turned out, other than the fact that the, his proportions are just a little off. The head sculpt, though, is phenomenal. Fine work to NECA Toys for giving us a karate kid. Let, keep, let that sink in. NECA Toys date did give us a Karate Kid Mr. Miyagi figure. Did you ever think that that possibility would ever happen? I know I certainly didn't. If you managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the new retro cloth Karate Kid Mr. Miyagi, or really based on this review and this review alone, do you think his proportions are off? They seem off to me. Maybe I'm just... Maybe I don't see it right. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of this figure. I always love reading your comments. Make sure as well you hit that subscribe button down below. Swing next door to that bell notification and make sure you switch that on as well so that when future videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. As we already had a look at Daniel LaRusso and now we looked at Mr. Miyagi, you can kind of pinpoint where we're going to be going to next. No, it's not a subscription box, although that would be fun if I just kind of slid that in there. We are going to be having a look at the skeleton dressed Halloween costume Johnny Lawrence in the upcoming review. So if this is your fancy, stay tuned because the review of Johnny Lawrence is just around the corner. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.